the question that is the arrest and detention and the possible charges being framed against challenge the result of the election and the counting. Thereafter, within 12 days of the election, he was arrested or taken into custody by officers of the army. That was on the 8th of February this year. Thereafter, he has continued to be in detention and now we are told that he is going to face charges at a court martial. Now, the arrest and detention of persons is the subject matter of our law. Primarily, the superior law of the country, namely the Constitution. The Constitution in Article 13.1 states very clearly that no one shall be denied his personal liberty and freedom and taken into custody except according to the procedure laid down by law. It further says that moment a person is arrested and taken into custody, this is something of very grave importance, that that person will be informed the reasons for his arrest. Article 13.2 says that a person so arrested will be produced before the nearest court within the time laid down by law. The applicable law in this regard is the Code of Criminal Procedure Act Number no. 15 of 1979. It is a law under which offences are investigated, persons arrested and produced in court as provided for in the Constitution. The Code of Criminal Procedure Act in Section 109 states how an offence is to be investigated. It is reported to a police officer who, if he has sufficient reason, will arrest the person who is suspected of that offence. Section 32 of the Code says how an arrest should be made. And 37 states that as soon as a person is arrested, within 24 hours, he shall be produced before the nearest magistrate's court. Now that is the ordinary law of this country stemming from the Constitution. Now this law is not restricted to Sri Lanka. This is a law that is Sri Lanka has adopted from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights because freedom from arrest and liberty is a universally recognized human right. It is so recognized in Section 3 and Section 9 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which was the first act of the United Nations Organization done in December 1948. Thereafter, the rights declared in the Universal Declaration have been incorporated in two, convention, two covenants. What is applicable now is the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which was adopted by the United Nations in 1966 and which came into force in 1976. Sri Lanka ratified the covenant in June 1980. And it is an obligation of Sri Lanka to report on the compliance of the provisions of the covenant to the Human Rights Committee. So Article 13 of our Constitution stems really from a fundamental human right that is recognized universally. We know that arrest and detention of Sarat Fonseca has not been in compliance with Article 13.1. Article 13.2, the Code of Criminal Procedure Act or the provisions of the Universal Declaration or the Covenant. It has been stated that he was arrested under the Army Act. I would now briefly deal with the provisions of the Army Act. The Army Act was enacted in 1949 to organize and maintain an army for Sri Lanka or Ceylon as it was then known. There are several offences in the in Part 12 of the Army Act. Each of the offences say that a person liable to such an offence would be a person, I quote, subject to military law. Army Act also says who would be considered as being subject to military law. This is said in Section 34 of the Army Act. There are two classes of persons subject to military law under that provision. That is, officers and enlisted soldiers. The term officer is defined in section 162 of the Army Act to say, officer shall be a commissioned officer. 
So we know that persons subject to military law are commissioned officers and enlisted soldiers.